Hello, everybody. On the 28th of March, I've uh, uploaded a video on um, uh, Germany's new rapid fight against speech. That was my title. And it was about a law that came into effect this month. Um, I used this video to speak about how this uh, law came into being. Um, that is um, what, what um, chambers of parliament we have and, and so on. So you have an idea of the overall structure um, of our uh, of our system and that it's not going to uh, to come to fruition in any meaningful sense because our data uh, protection restrictions and uh, you would need a warrant for basically everything. Um, I wanted to make this video about uh, the details that have changed but then I actually have already recorded one version of this one and I've noticed that it's too much nitty gritty and um, it's boring the sh out of you. So instead I will just um, um, go to some highlights that um, have changed with regards to the overall um, approach to uh, to speech, what kind of speech uh, they want to limit and uh, or, or what what routes they they try to take. And it it seems that they have um, they have increased the penalty for a speech against politicians. That's the first surprise um, for for most of us. Um, I, for example, just uh, re, uh, revisited this uh, this topic after I saw a blog post um, that uh, was surprised about a law that is already in our books and was changed now by this law, and that is protecting politicians exclusively. So we have laws to protect politicians exclusively against speech or hateful speech, as they like to, to call it. Maybe I should add on this point that we have a different legal system than uh, the English-speaking world. Um, our laws are basically codified in certain uh, law books, and new laws are actually to change existing laws. So um, when I say, well, it changed 188, um, um, or um, paragraph 188 in the penalty code, that means there is already a law book, and uh, the new law, this anti uh, right-wing extremism uh, law is uh, filling in new words into existing laws and replacing um, words and uh, removing some of those. And there's also one uh, change that has to do with this uh, 188 uh, law that is um, happening in um, paragraph 194. Um, the penalty code, as I said, is standardized and therefore it is cutting through uh, basically everything at the same time. Um, when one change is, is made in, in one area, it may affect a lot of other laws because it is um, the, the laws are supposed to affect basically the entire jurisdiction. And it's not just about one uh, specific uh, uh, process. So I give you this very specific example that you see, and uh, that is um, uh, the initiation of laws um, has has been changed with regards to uh, speech, but it does not only include speech, but it's now cutting uh, through all uh, the legislation, and that is um, uh, everybody um, can uh, can basically initiate a, a legal process against. Uh, uh, somebody who has offended or has some, done something against a politician. Um, so the initiation of an investigation is no longer up to the person that was supposedly offended, but anybody, uh, anybody can um, defend his uh, politician of, of choice or adoration. Um, they can uh, they can now um, uh, sue on behalf of uh, of some politicians, or not, not sue, but initiate um, a legal process uh, on behalf of somebody else's feelings. Uh, so that has changed. If uh, the if the investigating authorities think that is relevant to the public, so I think an oppositional politician won't get the same protections than uh, somebody who is who is widely supported by the media and by the public. Another change that is um, cutting through the entire legal basis, so to say, uh, is um, paragraph 46 of the Penalty Code, SGGB, and it um, is about, um, about the judgment or the, the, the range of options a judge has to dole out. Um, to dole out punishments. And uh, what it says, for example, is that a judge has to take into account the overall effects his punishments has 
on um, on the on the person he is judging. So somebody who is very rich uh, can handle a high fine, a high a penalty, a financial penalty, um, and somebody who is very poor uh, might be bankrupted for the same um, for the same. Uh, sentence. So therefore, he has to take into account um, what the overall effect his um, his uh, punishment uh, will have on the on the person he's judging. Um, and they also included, and that is quite interesting, that the motivation of the law is to be taken into account. So this is the hate crime um, um, layer uh, on on now every law, um, every every judgment, every every uh, court can now. Uh, or oh, that was already the the case before. Um, uh, can um, judge something harder if if the motivation was, for example, xenophobia. Um, this had been the case before. Now this change is not about xenophobia, and that's quite interesting. They are including anti-Semitism as a motivation that is aggravating a crime. I think what is interesting about it is that until this month, apparently, there was no such a problem as anti-Semitism. Um, and um, it is only really that uh, from the 1st of April onwards, uh, we have to um, uh, to take anti-Semitism into account when we judge a crime. And I think this is to make the overall law Uh, appear as if it were always designed to uh, protect Jews um, and uh, as it were always designed as a lesson from the Third Reich history, when obviously it wasn't. As I said, uh, the overall civil law uh, structure um, is rather that um, existing laws are changed so people really only see the the overall uh, law book and in that law, A book in that law book, the, the the total, the complete law does not give away that this new change, that this new addition of anti-Semitism, is a very recent one. So somebody who comes uh, across that text will think that um, this law was created in response to the Third Reich, when in reality, um, this this new um, addition uh, just shows that uh, they are actually trying to combat hate crime. Um, for completely different purposes, and uh, that is mostly, first and foremost, to protect mass immigration. Outside of that topic, I want to remind you that I wish to go on to a different channels. So if you know somebody who also happens to have a somewhat small channel, uh, please let me know. I talk basically about everything, but of me personally, I want to talk about uh, continental Europe, which is a surprisingly uninteresting topic, apparently. Um, and uh, I would be happy to basically preach whatever I know uh, to whatever the topic of the given channel is. So if you know somebody who wants me on his channel or who wishes to be on my channel, um, you know, uh, let me know and we might arrange something and uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. Thank you for listening. And as always, I hope to see you soon. Bye.